with the help of animations and clear visuals, we will understand everything you need to know about iron deficiency anemia in this lecture. Along with mnemonics, we will learn how iron is absorbed from the diet, how it is reclaimed from a graveyard. What are those hostile monsters in a death valley? What exactly goes wrong in iron deficiency anemia? We will understand how different features of iron deficiency anemia develop, how phylonachia develops, what is pica, what is restless leg syndrome. Finally, we will understand the investigations and logic behind them. Watch the video till end and we will also solve some USMLE style case scenarios. Also, please check out the description of this video for a link to free lecture notes. Please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon. Hello, I am Dr. Azaz from MedicoVisual.com. Welcome to this visual lecture. Iron deficiency is the most common nutritional deficiency in the world. So, iron has an important role in synthesis of hemoglobin. Not only that, but iron is also required for many other important cellular functions. So before discussing the iron deficiency anemia, we must first understand that how hemoglobin is normally synthesized inside the RBC precursor cells and how RBCs are synthesized. And what is exactly the role of iron during this process? In the bone marrow of an adult, there are some cells uh, and from these cell, a single type of cell, from a single type of cell, uh, all of the blood cell originate. This single type of cell, which has potential to give rise to a variety of different types of cell, variety of different blood forming cell, uh, this cell is called pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell. Pluripotent means it has potential to form different types of cell and hematopoietic means uh, it's blood forming pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell so these cells replicate and some of these replicated cells they remain there as such uh, to maintain a supply of these cells to maintain a copy of themselves to maintain a supply of pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell while other of these replicated cells they give rise to those cells which are committed towards formation of specific blood cell progeny. For example, some will form WPCs, other will form megakaryocytes, and some other will form RBCs and so on. But right now, we are only concerned with those cells that are committed towards formation of red blood cells. So, these cells which are committed towards formation of red blood cells they form they rapidly divide and they form colonies of cells they form colonies of rbc forming cells so we call them colony forming unit erythroblast cfue we call them cfue now here before moving forward i will briefly discuss the basic structure of hemoglobin hemoglobin consists of a protoporphyrin ring and in center of this protoporphyrin ring is the ferrous ion, the iron. Iron is present in the center. So this structure as a whole, the protoporphyrin ring along with iron, this is called heme. The iron which is present in the center of this ring, uh, it has capability that it binds, it reversibly binds with oxygen and by doing so, it performs its action, its function uh, in transporting of oxygen throughout the body. Uh, this heme, it is attached with a polypeptide chain called globin. This globin, like an, any other polypeptide or protein, it is synthesized by the process of transcription followed by translation of the globin gene. So, four such monomers are present. So, basically, hemoglobin is nothing more than a tetramer of four such monomers. Uh, and each monomer consists of heme and globin. Heme and globin, heme and globin, heme and globin. This is the basic structure of hemoglobin. Now, let's move forward. Under appropriate stimulation, from the colony forming unit erythroblast, 
लार्ज न्यूक्लियटेड लार्ज न्यूक्लियटेड आर बी सी फॉर्मिंग सेल्स कार्ड अरिथ्रोब्लास्ट आर फॉर्म्ड वी वॉन्ट बी डिस्कसिंग एग्जैक्टली द स्टेज ऑफ आर बी सी सिंथिस द स्टेज ऑफ अरिथ्रोपोसिस दैट्स अ टॉपिक ऑफ अनदर डे बट हेयर वट हैपन द बेसिक आइडिया इज दैट इन द माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया ऑफ दीज अर्ली प्रोजेनिटर सेल्स इन द माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया थ्रू अ मल्टी स्टेप प्रोसेस दे सिंथिसाइज the uh, protoporphyrin ring so protoporphyrin ring is synthesized in the mitochondria through a multi step process now this protoporphyrin ring it is waiting for iron so that in it can incorporate the iron into it thus forming the heme so from where the iron comes so as it turns out there are some special drugs there, there are some special drugs which transport the iron and they are unloaded and this iron is then this iron is then attached with uh, incorporated into the center of protoporphyrin ring so these special trucks which transport the ferrous these ferrous transporting trucks are called transferrin transferrin these are simply proteins which these are ferrous transporting proteins now in iron deficiency anemia what will happen that of course this uh this ferrous will be deficient so iron is deficient so this heme will not be formed so when heme will not be formed ultimately what will happen hemoglobin will not be formed so process of hemoglobin synthesis will be impaired in iron deficiency anemia because of improper heme synthesis so these uh, what we call them the protoporphyrin ring so these protoporphyrin ring will start accumulating they will start accumulating in the rbc precursor cell because they are without iron so free protoporphyrin ring will start accumulating in the rbc precursor cell and these protoporphyrin ring these are toxic to the plasma membrane of these cells why they are toxic because they can generate reactive oxygen species under normal normal circumstances these reactive oxygen species these are neutralized by special enzymes special iron requiring enzymes special iron iron containing enzymes for example catalase and glutathione peroxidase they neutralize these reactive oxygen species but when iron is deficient naturally these iron requiring enzymes will be deficient so what will happen that these reactive oxygen species they will be left unattended they won't be able to neutralize so they will accumulate and they will cause lipid peroxidation of plasma membrane of rbc so resultantly the rbcs which are formed they will be misshapen so these misshaped rbc some of these misshaped rbc they form elliptical like structure and they resemble pencil or cigar so we call them pencil cell or cigar cell another thing that will happen is that the rbc they will become fragile they will become misshaped they will become fragile and they will they will stuck in the capillaries and they will be eaten up by macrophages so what will happen that rbc's life span will be reduced so rbc life span will be reduced ultimately the number of rbc will be reduced in the blood okay so let's move forward so the early progenitor cell the early rbc precursor cell they have accumulated very little hemoglobin as they divide and subdivide with each division they accumulate more and more hemoglobin with each division they become smaller in size they become more specialized and they accumulate more and more hemoglobin this is uh, very important to understand that with each division they become smaller in size now these cells are selfish cells that's what i call them these are selfish like some thankless people in our society why i am calling them selfish because what they do is that they throw away they throw away the machinery which has synthesized hemoglobin for them they throw away nucleus and other organelles including ribosomes and mitochondria 
why they do why they do so probably they do so in order to keep their size smaller otherwise they would get stuck in the narrow passageways of capillaries and they will be eaten up by hostile monsters i mean the macrophages we will discuss that later now in iron deficiency anemia first problem will be that uh, the rbcs they will be pale they will be less red why they will be less red because hemoglobin synthesis is impaired so naturally hemoglobin imparts the red color to rbc so when hemoglobin this red color pigment is deficient the color of rbc will be pale it will be we call them hypochromic along with that they will divide in the hopes they will have some extra divisions in the hopes that they will accumulate more and more hemoglobin but obviously that that does not happen so resultantly the size the size of rbc the size of mature rbc is smaller than the normal cell and they are pale they are pale they are less red so we call them that rbc which are formed in in iron deficiency anemia we call them microcytic hypochromic rbc microcytic because they are small hypochromic because they are less red along with that elliptical cigar like or pencil like cells are formed we call them pencil cell or cigar cell why they are formed of course i have told you due to the uh, damage to plasma membrane that is mediated by the uh, that is mediated by reactive oxygen species generated from free protopore firing ring so next we will discuss that from where the iron come what are the sources of iron so let's discuss what are the sources of iron from where the trucks these trucks these iron carrying trucks from where they get iron from how they are loaded with iron so there are two sources of iron one is from the died from the gi tract and the other source is a graveyard a graveyard you may wonder well i will explain it later so first we will discuss from the git that how iron is absorbed from git so iron is absorbed from the duodenum it is absorbed from duodenum and in duodenum there are of course the intestinal epithelial cells or enterocyte and let's enlarge a single enterocyte and then we will see that how it absorbs iron so iron in the diet is mostly in the fe3 positive form in the ferric form and uh, in vegetarian diet there are certain components of vegetarian diet for example the phytic acid the oxalates and phosphates which form insoluble complexes with iron these complexes uh, due to formation of these complexes the absorption of iron is impeded so vegetarian diet is not the best source of iron and animal source is much better source of iron because it has much better absorption so that's why in the long run the vegetarian people those who are on vegetarian diet they are more prone to development of iron deficiency anemia so as i told you that in diet it is iron is in the form of fe3 positive but our body cannot absorb this ferric iron uh, our body has special demand for ferrous iron so this must be reduced to ferrous iron so that it can be absorbed from interior site so there is an enzyme called ferroreductase which converts this ferric iron into ferrous iron and vitamin c and stomach acid also helps in re reduction of ferric into ferrous iron now what how i will tell you that how to remember this ferric versus ferrous the ferric this ferric rhymes with hat trick ferric rhymes with hat trick and it has valency 3 fe3 positive while ferrous it has o and 2 the word 2 also has o so it has valency fe2 positive it is fe2 positive so 
from fe2 positive it uh, it is absorbed with the help of uh, a transporter protein called divalent metal transporter 1 we can simply call it dmt1 this dmt1 protein is not loyal to iron uh, because it is also involved in absorption uh, it also transport other divalent ions for example cu2 positive and zn2 positive so iron from apical side it is absorbed ferrous from the apical side it is absorbed into the uh, cytosol of the cell the enterocyte with the help of dmt1 receptor the heme iron which is from the meat source from the animal source it has a special receptor for it and this receptor or this not receptor carrier protein and this heme carrier protein is uh, called hcp simple heme carrier protein hcp1 so heme is heme enters into the cell with the help of heme carrier protein here in the cell there is an enzyme called heme oxygenase and this heme oxygenase uh it removes the outer uh, protoporphyrin ring in order to get this ferrous ion and of course this ferrous ion becomes a part of cytosolic ferrous pool cytosolic ferrous ion pool now this ferrous ion inside the cell it is toxic to cell because it can generate oxide radical so what our body does is what our enterocyte does is that it uh, uh it immediately puts it into a container it puts this ferrous ion into the container this ferrous containing container or tin pack is called ferritin it's called ferritin and this ferritin is the storage form of iron ferritin is storage form of iron ferritin consists of a central iron core and outside the iron core is the protein shell outside the iron core is protein shell so this protein shell along with the iron core is ferritin and this ferritin is storage form of iron and it is normally present in hepatocytes as well as in the macrophages of bone marrow and spleen although this ferritin is normally a cytosolic protein it is present intracytosolic it is a cytosolic protein but very small amount of ferritin is released from these macrophages of bone marrow into the blood why it is released into the blood we don't know precisely its mechanism is complex and not clearly understood and the details of which is beyond the scope of this lecture but what we clearly know is that this ferritin which is released into the blood uh, if we measure this we can quantitatively estimate the intracytosolic storage iron we can estimate the level of intracytosolic storage iron for example if this ferritin in blood is low it means that intracytosolic ferritin would be low and if this is high it means that intracytosolic ferritin or storage iron is high so this ferritin is uh, this ferritin levels plasma ferritin levels it is routinely done as a part of uh, iron studies to assess the to invest <coughs> to investigate the different types of anemia we will discuss that later in that part when we will discuss investigations of iron deficiency anemia so what will happen that whenever and wherever this ferritin is required as per requirement uh, this iron as per requirement of iron this iron is removed from ferritin and it is uh, it is ported out it is ported out of enterocyte into the blood through the basal side with the help of protein called ferroportin ferro so ferroportin is the protein which ports out ferrous outside the enterocyte and here 
our master ke bes the worthy liver will send some empty trucks it will send transferrin and transferrin will pick up this ferrous and it will transport it to wherever it is required mainly to bone marrow and to liver for the synthesis of uh, for the synthesis of important enzymes another thing that if in the body there is excessive iron there is too much iron in the body so what our worthy liver will do is that it will send a special protein called hepcidin it, this hepcidin it will block this ferroportin protein and it will internalize it will cause internalization of ferroportin and now this iron will get stuck it will get stuck into this enterocytes and it cannot be absorbed into our body now here is i would i would love to tell you something noteworthy is that uh, there is no precise and well coordinated mechanism to excrete iron i mean if when iron is absorbed in our body there is no proper mechanism to get rid of this iron so what our body do is that it try to coordinate the absorption of iron so if there is too much iron in our body it will decrease the absorption of iron by controlling the hepcidin level and that's the mechanism but it cannot get rid of iron under physiological condition physiologically the body gets rid of iron when uh, during the normal cellular turnover of enterocytes normally the enterocytes they are shed shed into the lumen they are shed out into the lumen so these enterocytes especially of the duodenal epithelium they are rich in iron so when they are shed body will get rid of iron the other mechanism is that a small amount of iron remember iron is present in almost all of the cells of the body so small amount of iron is of course also present in skin so small amount of iron is also lost during the normal turnover of skin epithelial cell and very small amount of iron is also lost during sweating and in females the physiologically iron is also lost during menstrual cycle during the menstrual bleeding so in a nutshell what i would what i think of this mechanism is that iron iron is imported into our body from the deep sea from the deep sea of intestinal lumen with the help of enterocyte and this iron is ported into the into our body through ferroportin and transported on the roads of circulatory system transported on the roads of blood vessel with the help of transferrin so this was the mechanism of iron absorption in our body so one source of iron is uh from diet the gi tract the other source of iron is the graveyard well it's not an ordinary graveyard it's the graveyard of rbc spleen my friends in the red pulp of spleen there are specialized capillaries with gaps in them and these specialized capillaries these are called sinusoids young healthy and energetic rbcs they can come out from these gaps and then go back into these sinusoids through these gaps by squeezing themselves because they are flexible enough they are flexible enough because of presence of certain flexibility maintaining proteins but the old fragile rbc they get stuck in these sinusoids in these gaps of sinusoids because with time these flexibility maintaining proteins they become dysfunctional now the karma has caught these rbcs earlier 
they had thrown away their protein synthesizing machinery they had thrown away the nucleus and other organelles during their maturation so now they cannot resynthesize the flexibility maintaining proteins and now they are stuck in these uh, in the death valley of supply now it's a very sad situation for them now uh in this uh, in this death valley of spleen there are horrific monsters <coughs> and after seeing these horrific monsters these young rbc they will quickly go back into cyanocytes but our old rbcs they are still stuck into these into these pores into these into these uh, passageways of the cyanocytes and now our monster they will surround it they will surround these old old rbcs and they will engulf them and they will destroy them they will eat them up and they will destroy them and they will they will obtain the heme from them these iron hungry monsters they will remove the protoporphyrin ring in order to obtain iron again here they will throw this iron into the iron containing tin packs called ferritin because it is concerned with lots of iron it it is concerned with handling of lots of iron so iron storing capacity of ferritin is overwhelmed so this soluble ferritin they will form uh, insoluble aggregates they will form insoluble aggregates of ferritin and these insoluble aggregates of ferritin these are called hemosiderin and here again as per requirement from these macrophages iron can be ported out from the ferroportin with the help of ferroportin and transported with the help of transferrin now here something again noteworthy is that Uh, the source of iron that is obtained from the spleen from the spleen macrophages it is recycled iron it is recycled uh, it is reclaimed after destruction of rbcs remember one thing physiologically i have told you that how iron is lost from the body but pathologically the only way iron can be lost from body is that if hemoglobin is lost from the body for example during blood loss during blood loss for example during hemorrhage uh, during hemorrhage blood is lost and hemoglobin is naturally lost so uh, iron will be reduced in our body there will be iron deficiency similarly uh, when there is something called hemoglobin urea when uh, hemoglobin it trickles down through the glomerulus and it is lost into urine during remember during hemolytic anemia when there is excessive destruction of rbcs when there is excessive destruction of rbc due to any reason there won't be iron deficiency because body will reclaim that iron body will reclaim that iron the macrophages will eat up the is heme and uh, they, it will reclaim the iron now we will discuss that what is the etiology of iron deficiency anemia i mean what are the causes of iron deficiency anemia this is the schematic representation of total body iron that is the iron pool the total body iron uh most of the iron in our body it is in the form of hemoglobin while small amount is in the form of myoglobin and very small amount is in the uh, very small amount of iron is the component of some other important enzymes in our body this is the functional iron while the other one is the storage iron storage iron is uh, in the form of ferritin and hemosiderin while very small amount of iron 0.1% only it is in the form of transferrin the transferrin trucks i mean the Uh, iron which is being transferred so there is continuous supply of iron from the diet and of course there is continuous expenditure of iron there is some iron which is being lost 
and there is of course iron utilization so how iron deficiency anemia can occur number one there could be problem with iron supply that iron supply is impeded for example uh, vegetarian diet of course I have told you that vegetarian diet is poor source of iron and of course malnutrition and then there could be an absorption defect for example there is uh, in celiac disease for example there is atrophy of uh, the there is atrophy of intestinal villi so iron deficiency can occur in that other than that when there is iron loss iron can be lost pathologically in the form of blood loss so when there is chronic blood loss it can lead to iron deficiency for example uh, during acid peptic disease during in the peptic ulcer a uh, small amount of blood uh, is lost from the body and if it if this condition is chronic and it can lead to iron deficiency and if there is chronic menorrhagia in women if there is excessive menstruation excessive menstrual loss of blood it can lead to iron deficiency then worm infestation for example there is a worm called ankylostoma duodenale this worm it lives in the intestine of the body and it feeds from the intestinal blood it it feeds from the uh, uh, it sucks the intestinal blood and feeds on it so it can lead to if this condition is chronic it can lead to iron deficiency and in old person in especially in old men ca colon it could be a cause of blood loss it can cause blood loss which will lead to iron deficiency and there is also blood loss in severe cases of ulcerative colitis then uh, iron could be uh, iron deficiency could occur when there is increased utilization especially for example in toddlers and infants in toddlers and infants as they are growing as they are growing rapidly they need more iron uh, they, they need more iron than adults so there is increased utilization on the top of that the breast milk it is poor source of iron so toddlers and infants they are more prone to development of iron deficiency anemia and of course the children and adolescents they also uh, uh, need they, there is also increased utilization in the growing age in children and adolescents so if diet is poor diet is iron deficient it can lead to iron deficiency anemia and in pregnancy because the pregnant lady she has to feed another another human being which is being developed in in her womb so it, it the, she is more prone to development of iron deficiency anemia and that's the reason we give folic acid and iron supplements during pregnancy to prevent iron deficiency anemia as a prophylaxis so this is the basic idea of etiology of iron deficiency so now we will discuss the clinical features of iron deficiency anemia what i will do is that i will introduce you to the problems that occur at molecular or biochemical level in uh, iron deficiency anemia and then from those problems i will deduce the symptomatology of this condition in iron deficiency anemia there is deficiency of hemoglobin in rbc's so naturally the rbc's are bringing less than normal oxygen towards the peripheral tissues then there is a heme containing pigment called myoglobin this myoglobin it acts as a reservoir of oxygen for muscle so when there is decrease oxygen supply from externally from the blood when there is decreased oxygen supply externally from the blood it will release its own oxygen so that muscle can use this oxygen and thus muscle will sustain oxygen deficient circumstances for a longer duration so naturally because it is heme containing pigment this would also be deficient in iron deficiency anemia this is one problem 
then here I would like to discuss another thing that from glucose uh, energy is obtained by breaking down glucose into pyruvate through a process called glycolysis during this process energy is obtained in the form of energy currency ATP energy currency ATP along with that this process also provide a check a bank check to the cell and these checks are in the form of NADH and FADH2 so this FADH2 and NADH this will go to respiratory chain to the bank of respiratory chain and these checks will be withdrawn uh, through the process of oxidative phosphorylation again from these checks ATP the energy currency is obtained by the process of oxidative phosphorylation then the body it loves to suck out every penny possible from the nutrients including glucose and other nutrients so this pyruvate it is then funneled through the TCA cycle and some more energy in the form of ATP is obtained this process also require oxygen this respiratory chain mediated oxidative phosphorylation this process also require oxygen so there is oxygen deficiency so this Respi oxidative phosphorylation would be impaired as well as TCA cycle would be impaired respiratory chain is not only impaired due to oxygen deficiency but also because there are components of respiratory chain these include cytochromes and these cytochromes they contain iron as, a, as, a, as their important as their core component so in iron deficiency anemia what problem could be there number one there will be uh, oxidative phosphorylation would suffer TCA cycle would suffer as well as along with that on the top of that myoglobin is not working so what will happen yes so there will be severe energy deficiency at cellular level so this will lead to what this will lead to fatigue and other symptoms but our uh, our beloved heart it will try to compensate this what it will do is that it will beat rapidly there will be tachycardia to compensate this problem there will be tachycardia high uh, there will be increased heart rate and when heart rate increased heart rate is noticeable by the patient if the patient comes to you and he or she tells you that i have rapid heart rate this is called palpitation so remember palpitation is a symptom which patient tell you while tachycardia it is a sign which you measure the pulse uh, which you elicit by measuring the pulse rate then uh, it would lead to fatigue breathlessness on exertion and there will be decreased exercise tolerance and of course there could be headache as you know that hemoglobin imparts red color to blood so in anemia in any anemia not just iron deficiency anemia there would be generalized pallor there would be generalized pallor of skin the conjunctiva the conjunctiva of eye it is richly supplied with capillaries so this pallor would be specially evident from the conjunctiva of eye so in in the uh, in anemia there would be conjunctival pallor this is an important sign which is elicited during general physical examination of anemia remember iron is not only required for uh, synthesis of hemoglobin iron is the part it, it acts as a cofactor for number of important enzymes and one of that enzyme is ribonucleotide reductase ribonucleotide reductase is involved in synthesis of deoxyribonucleotides and these deoxyribonucleotides you must be knowing that these are the important components of dna so uh, these iron containing enzyme ribonucleotide reductase it would be deficient in iron deficiency anemia so there would be naturally there would be decreased mitotic activity in the cells so those cells so because cellular proliferation would suffer so those cell uh, which undergo rapid cellular proliferation or which undergo rapid cellular turnover those would suffer the most 
the GIT epithelium is a classical example uh, the tongue our tongue is not smooth the mucosa of tongue it is it is thrown into mucosal projections or mucosal folds are there and these mucosal folds these are called papilla for example you can see here so tongue is not smooth these are there are mucosal projection called mucosal papilla and in iron deficiency anemia because epithelium is not uh, efficiently turned over there is no proper turnover no proper synthesis no efficient synthesis of epithelium so tongue will become smooth tongue will become smooth there will be loss of tongue papilla there is loss of lingual papilla so we call this condition atrophic glossitis along with that there will be inflammation of tongue why because remember immunity also decreases in iron deficiency anemia the mechanism is complex but the basic idea is that there are certain enzymes which are required for immunity so these enzymes these iron containing enzyme would be deficient so there will be decreased immunity and this leads to uh, the iron deficient anemic person would be more prone to development of infection so there would be atrophic glossitis another problem would be that there is something called atrophic gastritis similar to atrophic glossitis there would be loss of prop uh, there is loss of there is atrophy there is atrophy of epithelial lining of the stomach so there would be atrophy of epithelial lining of stomach along with that there would be inflammation so this is called atrophic gastritis along with that there would be inflammation of angles of mouth we call this condition angular stomatitis so in iron deficiency anemia there would be atrophic glossitis there could be atrophic gastritis there could be angular stomatitis another point i would love to highlight here that along with atrophic gastritis there would be decreased secretion of stomach acid there would be decreased HCL production in stomach there would be we call it achlorhydria so when there will be achlorhydria uh, remember I already told you that stomach acid it helps to keep the iron in its reduced form that is it helps to keep the iron in its ferrous form and ferrous form is the form it is the form of iron that is absorbed from the enterocyte so in achlorhydria when there is decreased production of stomach acid the absorption of iron will be reduced absorption of iron decreases so it would further exacerbate the pre-existing iron deficiency anemia nail plate consists of fibrous keratin proteins arranged parallel to its transverse axis in between these keratin fibers are non-fibrous globular protein called keratin associated proteins which hold together the keratin fibers they act as a glue these keratin fibers and keratin associated proteins these are rich in cysteine amino acid thus they form disulfide bonds so disulfide bonds are formed between keratin fibers and keratin associated protein and these disulfide bonds they impart the integrity and strength to the structure of nail plate cysteine amino acid is semi essential amino acid that can be synthesized normally in our body from methionine through a multi-step process involving involving many different enzymes and one of the enzyme which is required for this process is heme containing cystathione beta synthase that might be deficient in severe cases of iron deficiency anemia furthermore the two cysteine amino acid they combine together uh, their sulfhydryl group is reduced their sulfhydryl group is reduced in the presence of oxygen and disulfide bond is formed between two cysteine amino acid and resultantly the amino acid which is formed is called cysteine amino acid so two cysteine amino acid they combine and formed 
disulfide bond and cysteine amino acid is formed so this is this disulfide bond so when iron deficiency is there in severe cases of iron deficiency there will be of course tissue oxygenation would be decreased at cellular level so this process will be impaired as well as synthesis of cysteine amino acid from methionine this might be impaired so because of these reasons this these might be the reasons of decreased cysteine content in the nail plate so thus the structural integrity of nail is not maintained so the nail plate which is formed it is thin and brittle so brittle and thin nail plate is formed in severe cases of iron deficiency anemia furthermore uh, it is believed that uh, in iron deficiency anemia there would be decreased blood supply in the distal part of subungual connective tissue so subungual connective tissue the distal part of subungual connective tissue would be destroyed and this thin brittle nail plate will be depressed centrally with inverted margins so there will be central concavity or depression along with inverted inverted margins and central concavity or depression thus the nail adopt a spoon like shape normal nail turns into a spoon like spoon shaped nail and this is called kylonechia kylonechia means spoon shaped nail kylonechia is a characteristic finding of iron deficiency anemia uh, although the pathogenesis of this kylonechia pathogenesis of this process is not that simple but the basic mechanism is this it is too complex to explain but basic mechanism is this iron is the part of enzymes that are involved in synthesis of certain neurotransmitters including serotonin and dopamine so naturally in iron deficiency anemia such neurotransmitter would be deficient in central nervous system that might be the reason of psychological and behavioral manifestations of iron deficiency anemia that includes pica and restless leg syndrome pica is a uh, uh, eating disorder it's an eating disorder that is characterized by eating of non food items that include hair ice dirt and paint chips the term pica is derived from the latin word for magpie magpie is a bird that collects non food items restless leg syndrome it is a condition in which there is uncontrollable and uncomfortable urge to move the legs and it is especially during the periods of inactivity especially in the evening and it is partially relieved by moving the legs so this is called restless leg syndrome it is believed that most likely the dopamine deficiency is involved in the pathogenesis of this process so in a nutshell the clinical features of iron deficiency anemia are of two types the erythroid clinical features which are mainly mediated uh, through the deficiency of hemoglobin in the rbc and non erythroid clinical feature which are not due to deficiency of uh, hemoglobin but are mainly are mediated through the deficiency of iron containing enzymes so erythroid clinical features are lethargy and fatigue dizziness and exertion and decreased exercise tolerance tachycardia palpitation and pallor non erythroid clinical features are brittle nails kylonechia or spoon shaped nails angular stomatitis atrophic glossitis atrophic gastritis pica and restless leg syndrome now we will discuss the investigations of iron deficiency anemia 
complete blood count or full blood count. Of course, there will be low hemoglobin because of impaired heme synthesis which leads to decreased production of hemoglobin. Then an average red blood cell or copper cell, that's what they call it. So average red blood cell or copper cell will have less than normal hemoglobin concentration. So there would be low MCHC, low mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. Then another thing that the size of mean corpus uh, the size of red blood cell or size of copper cell is reduced so the volume which would be occupied by an average red blood cell that would be low so there will be low mean corpus volume low mcv then here i would like to highlight another important concept let's suppose there is a jar which is filled with some balls so these balls are closely packed in the jar and the volume which is occupied by these balls it can be reduced in following ways that if the number of these balls is reduced so if number of these balls is reduced the volume occupied by these balls would be less similarly if uh, even if the number of these balls is not reduced the size of these balls it become less than normal then the volume occupied by these closely packed balls that would be reduced so let's suppose these are not balls these are rbc's and these these jars are not jars these are test tubes which are filled with blood sample up to here let's suppose this is also filled up to here with a blood sample and this is also filled with up to here with a blood sample so there is something called packed cell volume or hematocrit packed cell volume or hematocrit is the volume occupied by red blood cell it is the percentage of volume occupied by red blood cell in a blood sample in normally 40 percent of volume 40 percent of volume of uh, blood sample is is in the form of red blood cell so let's suppose this was a hundred ml, hundred ml, hundred ml sample of blood. Out of this hundred ml, the forty percent, the forty ml, forty ml would be the volume that would be occupied by closely packed red blood cell. This is the hematocrit or packed cell volume. We can also say it like that that it is the proportion hematocrit or packed cell volume it is the proportion of whole blood it is the proportion of whole blood that is in the form of red blood cell or it is the ratio it is the ratio of volume occupied by red blood cell to the total volume occupied by a blood sample so this is hematocrit or packed cell volume so packed cell volume or hematocrit can be reduced if number of rbc become less if number of rbc is reduced or if if size of rbc become less if size of rbc become less in iron deficiency anemia this problem will be there that size of rbc is low so packed cell volume will be low not only that there is decrease in size of rbc but on top of that there is there is decrease in number of rbc why because as i already told you that free protoporphyrin will accumulate in rbc and that are toxic to red cell red blood cells membrane they will generate reactive oxygen species that would cause lipid peroxidation of its cell membrane and the lifespan of rbc will be reduce leading to decrease in number of rbc so we can say that packed cell volume or hematocrit is decreased in iron deficiency anemia and of course there is decrease in rbc count then here another thing i would love to highlight is that uh, in iron deficiency some of the red blood cell they will have sufficient iron they would have adequate iron that their size will be normal while other they won't have sufficient iron so 
they won't efficiently form sufficient hemoglobin so their size will become smaller and some other they will have size in between so there is different there is variety in the size or there is variety in width of rbc so the size of rbc is not same we call it an iso and isocytosis iso mean same cytosis means size of cell and n mean not so literally it means that size of size of cells is not same there are variety in sizes of cell so we call it that there is increase in variety of width of red blood cell so increased red cell distribution width increased rdw would be there then there would be increased platelet count so in iron deficiency anemia the number of rbcs reduce there is decreased rbc count and when there would be decreased rbc count this would lead to decrease in thickness or there is decrease in thickness of blood or there is decrease in viscosity of blood to compensate for decreased viscosity of blood our body our wealthy liver it will increase the platelet count it will increase the platelet count to compensate for decrease rbc count then of course there will be increased free protoporphyrin level as discussed earlier free protoporphyrin they will accumulate in rbc and some of these they will come out of the cell and they will be released into blood so there will be increased free protoporphyrin level some books also mention that there is increased zinc protoporphyrin level so there is zinc protoporphyrin level what's that so when uh, iron is not there the amount of iron is reduced what will happen that in the free protoporphyrin ring in the center of free protoporphyrin ring rather than rather than iron zinc will integrate zinc, zinc will incorporate into center of free protoporphyrin ring so not only there will be increase in free protoporphyrin level there will be increase in zinc protoporphyrin levels on peripheral smear in iron deficiency anemia the size of an average red blood cell will be less than normal the normal rbc has a size com comparable to lymphocyte but here you can see the size of red blood cell has become smaller but not only that some of the rbc would have normal size while most of them will have less than normal less than normal size so there is variety in sizes of red blood cell we call it anisocytosis then along with that the area of central pallor has become larger normally there is very small central pallor in the red blood cell but here the area of central pallor has increased we call such cell as target cell because they resemble target they resemble target target icon then uh, another thing that uh, there will be misshapen rbcs the shape of rbc won't be won't be same look look at this funny looking rbc and look at this rbc the funny looking one so there would be variety in shapes of rbc there would be many different types of red blood many different shapes of red blood cell we call it poikilocytosis we call it poikilocytosis and of course there would be elliptical pencil like or cigar cell so pencil cell or cigar cell would be there so that's about the peripheral smear of iron deficiency anemia iron studies in iron deficiency anemia the first thing is that because body's demand for iron is not being met so it will empty the iron stores and ferritin is the storage form of iron ferritin is the intracytosolic intracellular protein which is mainly present in hepatocyte as well as in the macrophage in the macrophages of spleen and bone marrow so ferritin is intracellular protein but very small amount of ferritin is released into blood by the macrophages of bone marrow 
and this blood ferritin or serum ferritin the level of serum ferritin it directly correlates quantitatively with the amount of intracellular ferritin so by measuring the serum ferritin level we can estimate the iron stores so first thing would be that serum ferritin level or storage iron would be low decrease serum ferritin level then serum iron would be low iron is not left alone in blood uh, the iron in blood or serum is that iron which is sitting on those iron transporting trucks the transferrin protein so serum iron would be low <coughs> then another thing that uh, uh, when the iron is low the liver it would send more and more empty trucks it would send more and more transferrin to fetch out every possible iron from the iron sources from from intestine and from the spleen from splenic macrophages so iron uh, the transferrin transferrin level would be high then there is something called total total iron binding capacity total iron binding capacity total iron binding capacity is the capacity of transferrin to hold iron it means that it is the amount of iron it is amount of iron that is held by that is held by transferrin if transferrin is fully saturated so it indirectly means it it that in it indirectly depicts it indirectly represents the transferrin level so if transferrin there are more trucks transferrin is high then it would be able to bind more iron if transferrin is low it would be able to bind less iron so because first thing is that trucks more trucks are sent so serum transferrin would be high because and because serum transferrin is high total iron binding capacity would be high so both transferrin as well as total iron binding capacity both would be increased then transferrin saturation would be low transfer transferrin saturation is the percentage of iron that is bound by that is bound to transferrin it is the percentage of iron that is bound to transferrin why it would be low uh, the formula is serum transferrin serum iron divided by total iron binding capacity multiplied by 100 that would be low because iron is less in blood so most of the trucks would be empty only very few trucks only very few trucks would would have iron sitting on them so so most of the trucks would be empty and only few trucks would be saturated with iron so transferrin saturation would be low this was about the iron studies in iron deficiency anemia remember the bone marrow biopsy is gold standard test for iron deficiency anemia but it is not usually required it's inconvenient another thing Uh, in iron deficiency anemia investigation we don't only uh, investigate the anemia uh, especially in elderly male we would also try to find the cause of anemia um, for example we would want to investigate a uh, concealed git bleeding let's say and for example the gi endoscopy might be required in such cases Now the time for a very quick review of what we have read. So iron is absorbed uh, from intestinal cells fr uh, from the duodenum. Uh, Fe three positive, the ferric form in the diet, it is converted into Fe two positive by the help of ferroreductase enzyme. Vitamin C as well as the stomach acid also helps in this process. Uh, then it is absorbed and enters into cell through divenet metal transporter protein DMT one. Uh, the heme iron, uh, it is transported into the interior side with the help of heme carrier protein. And both of this iron, it becomes the uh, intracellular. It becomes a part of intracellular uh, cytosolic iron pool. This is then stored into the ferritin protein. It is stored in the ferritin. 
protein which is a storage form of iron and as per requirement from interior side it is ported out of the cell through ferroportin this process is inhibited by hepcidin protein which is released from liver when the amount of iron is in body is high and then from uh, from the iron which is released which is ported out of the interior side through ferroportin it is then transported with the help of transferrin protein to wherever it is required the other source of iron is recycled iron which is uh, which is generated by the destruction of old senescent rbcs in the splenic macrophages they destroy the rbcs and they get the iron iron is again stored in the form of ferritin as well as hemocytin here also as per requirement as per requirement iron is removed from ferritin ported out of the cell and transported with the help of transferrin protein to wherever required then the these transferrin protein they bring the iron to the rbc precursor cell here it is incorporated into the center of pro protoporphyrin ring to form heme and from heme the globin chain is attached to it and hemoglobin is formed so in iron deficiency this iron won't be incorporated free protoporphyrin ring protoporphyrin ring it will accumulate in the rbc and it is toxic for the rbc it will damage the rbc membrane through R ros mediated lipid peroxidation then Uh, in iron deficiency anemia because hemoglobin synthesis is impaired the rbc it would have extra division so ultimately the smaller the rbc would be formed that that are smaller in size microcytes are formed then of course because because, uh, because the hemoglobin is deficient so it would there would be paler so there would be less red so there would be microcytic hypochromic rbc and of course due to uh, lipid peroxidation uh, there would be abnormally shaped rbc and some of these abnormally shaped rbc they resemble cigar or pencil they are called cigar cell pencil cell or elliptical cell what are the causes of iron deficiency anemia it could be due to decreased supply for example vegetarian diet because it is poor source of iron malnutrition as well as absorption defect for example celiac disease in chronic blood loss for example apd acid peptide disease or menorrhagia in women or worm infestation or ca colon or ulcerative colitis these are the common causes of chronic blood loss which may lead to iron deficiency anemia then there could be increased utilization for example in toddler and infants and and in children and adolescents because they are in growing age and then in pregnancy there would be increased utilization uh, which would be uh, a risk factor for development of iron deficiency anemia the etiology the clinical features of iron deficiency anemia that could be erythroid which are mediated due to decreased hemoglobin in rbc these are lethargy and fatigue dyspnea on exaction uh, tachycardia palpitation and pallor non erythroid clinical feature these are mostly due to deficiency of important iron containing enzymes these are brittle nails sclerotinia angular stomatitis atrophic glossitis atrophic gastritis spica and restless leg syndrome investigation include complete blood count in complete blood count there will be low hemoglobin because hemoglobin production is deficient low mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration and size of cell is small so there would be low mean corpuscular volume low mcv so pack cell volume would, would also decrease due to decrease rbc count as well as decrease in size size of red blood cell then there will be decrease rbc count because life span of rbc is reduced due to uh, rb due to damage to rbc membrane mediated by the free protoporphyrin uh, then there would be increased red cell distribution rate because number of there is variety in sizes of red blood cell then there would be increased platelet this is due to the due to, it is due to it is in the compensation for decrease in red blood cell count and then there would be increased free protoporphyrin level on the peripheral smear there would be target cell there, there would be increased central area of pallor there would be uh, pencil cells or cigar cell or elliptical cell and of course the size of red blood cell would be smaller and along with that we can find that there would be variety of different sizes and isocytosis and along with that there would be poikilocytosis variety of variety in the shape of red blood cell then on iron studies the ferritin or storage iron would be low serum iron would be low serum transferrin the trucks the trucks that are sent the transferrin protein the trucks that are sent that would be increased then the transferrin saturation the amount of iron that is bound to transfer and that would be low because iron is low so now we will solve some case scenarios scenario number 1 a 43 year old male had a history of heartburn 2 years back for which he was put on a drug x by a local general practitioner since then he is taking that drug and now for 2 months he is complaining of fatigue and breathlessness on exertion On physical examination conjunctival pallor is positive and peripheral smear shows microcytic hypochromic anemia on iron study serum ferritin is low which drug he is taking what is that drug x so pause the video and think about the answer then i will tell you after few second i will tell you the correct answer so in this scenario uh, the patient he is taking a drug for for 2 years and it is drug for heartburn most likely he is suffering from acid peptic disease and he is taking some drug for that condition for 2 years and now he is complaining for 2 months he is complaining of fatigue and breathlessness and uh, this scenario is of microcytic hypochromic anemia this is most likely now he is suffering from iron deficiency anemia so what drug he is taking 
द करेक्ट आंसर इज ओमेप्राजोल द प्रोटोन पम्प इनहिबिटर ओमेप्राजोल और प्रोटोन पम्प इनहिबिटर वट इट डज इज दैट इट डिक्रीज द सिक्रेशन ऑफ स्टमक एसिड इट डिक्रीज द एच सी एल प्रोडक्शन इन स्टमक एंड एज आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू दैट स्टमक द स्टमक एसिड इट हेल्प्स टू कीप द आयरन इन इट्स रिड्यूज फॉर्म इट हेल्प्स टू कीप द आयरन इन इट्स फेरस फॉर्म एंड फेरस फॉर्म इज द फॉर्म दैट इज एब्जॉर्ब फ्रॉम द इंटीरोसाइड सो प्रोलॉन्ग एंड क्रॉनिक यूज ऑफ प्रोटोन पम्प प्रोटोन पम्प इनहिबिटर इट मे कॉज आयरन डेफिशेंसी एनेमिया सो करेक्ट आंसर इज ओमेप्राजोल द प्रोटोन पम्प इनहिबिटर सो लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड Scenario number two: A uh, 27-year-old woman presented to gynecology OPD with menorrhagia, heavy menstrual bleeding, for one year. Her Hb level was nine gram per deciliter. So, he she is anemic. On general physical examination, her nails were spoon-shaped. So, chylonychia is there, and pallor was positive. Her total iron binding capacity (TIBC) is high. So, which of the following would be low? pause the video and we will meet soon okay so again this is a scenario of iron deficiency anemia so in iron deficiency anemia the dmt1 receptor it would be increased heme carrier protein it would be increased because iron is low so body wants to absorb every possible iron atom from intestine of course then liver will also send more and more transferrin trucks the carrier proteins to fetch out every possible iron atom but hepcidin the correct answer is hepcidin hepcidin would be low why hepcidin would be low because hepcidin is the protein that is secreted from liver when iron in the body is high and this causes internalization of ferroportin so iron gets stuck in the enterocyte and iron won't be absorbed so hepcidin it would only be increased only when there is when there is more iron in the body and in of obviously in iron deficiency state hepcidin would be low so correct answer is hepcidin so scenario number 3 a 14 year old boy with poor socio economic background complains of malaise decreased exercise tolerance and poor attention in the class on examination his nails were brittle conjunctival pallor was positive and lab reports shows that he is the hemoglobin is low mean corpuscular volume is low mcv is low and on peripheral smear microcytic hypochromic rbcs are present along with pencil cells so which of the following would be high in this condition so pause the video and think about the answer and i will be back okay so again this is a scenario of iron deficiency anemia so in iron deficiency states serum serum iron would be low so body will empty out its iron stores so serum ferritin would be low and the transferrin saturation would be low why because serum iron is low on the top of that liver is sending more and more iron carrying protein iron carrying drugs transferrin are high transferrin are high and serum iron is low so total iron that is bound to transferrin that would be low so transferrin that is saturated with iron so transferrin that is saturated with iron or transferrin saturation would be that would be low so and then lastly tibc total iron binding capacity as i already told you that transferrin the transferrin the iron carrying trucks these are these are more so ability to bind iron the total iron binding capacity that would be high so the correct answer is tibc correct answer is total iron binding capacity would be high in iron deficiency anemia so the last scenario a 30 year old farmer a male 30 year old farmer presented to medicine opd with the complaints of intermittent abdominal pain weakness loss of appetite and craving to eat soil craving to eat soil lab report shows eosinophilia this is important eosinophilia and decreased transferrin saturation 
what is the diagnosis now i am not going to tell you the answer to this question you are going to tell me the answer to this question in the comment sections below finally let's honor our hard working master chemist the liver oh, what's going on oh, i think he's back to work finally i would like to thank you for being with me stay tuned by subscribing to our channel weeks of research and technical work has brought you this lecture if you like this lecture please do support our work by sharing it do share your views in the comment section and tell us which topic do you want us to clarify next with a visual lecture a complete visual lecture series on acid base balance is underway and we have planned to give it to our dear viewers for free if we get a good response from this lecture